obviously when a person is very talented, it's in them and they have to share it with others. I just think that um, maybe if he could have found some balance. At 74, Rebby Jackson, the eldest sister of the legendary Jackson family, has finally decided to speak out about the rumors that have followed her for decades. Now she is ready to reveal the truth about her life, sharing intimate details about her relationships with her famous siblings and making shocking confessions about Michael, the brother who changed music history. What secrets has Rebby been keeping all these years? Watch this video to find out. Do you know the character Rebby Jackson? Comment A if the answer is yes. To better understand the rumors surrounding Rebby, we need to dig deeper into her origins. Her childhood is where the story begins. Early life and family background. There was a girl named Maureen Roulette Jackson who was born to Joseph and Catherine Jackson on May 29th, 1950. She was their first child and her name was Rebby. After spending her childhood in a modest home located at 2300 Jackson Street in Gary, Indiana, Rebby was immediately exposed to a life that was both full of love and full of challenges from the very beginning. Given that she was the firstborn child out of a total of 10 siblings, it was inevitable that she would be the primary caretaker for her younger siblings serving as a surrogate mother to them. She became the powerful woman she is now as a result of her intrinsic urge to care for other people, which she carried with her throughout her formative years. In addition to his profession as an employee at a steel factory, Rebby's father, Joseph, was a member of the Falcons, a band that played rhythm and blues music. The fact that Jackson was both a musician and a laborer contributed to the unique atmosphere that pervaded his family from the beginning. There, the two different rhythms of existence came together in perfect harmony with one another. Although Joseph put in a lot of effort in the mill, his aspirations to become a musician never completely disappeared. His expectations for his children extended far beyond the confines of their modest working class neighborhood. In contrast, Rebby's mother Catherine was a rock who gave stability and helped to solidify the ideals that the family held. As a devout Jehovah's Witness, Catherine placed a strong emphasis on the significance of religion in the raising of her children, and Rebby was not an exception to this rule. Among the Jackson children, Rebby, LaToya, and Michael Jackson were the ones who devoted the most attention to their religious beliefs and practices. These commitments would have a significant impact on their life. There was something special about the dynamics of growing up in a large family. Rebby's siblings gave birth to some of the most well-known stars in the music industry. Janet, Michael, Randy, LaToya, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Brandon, and Marlon are the members of the group. Because everyone brought something unique to the table, they were a dynamic and competitive family. Even though they had different personalities and even competed with one another, the Jackson family was brought together by a common experience that was both extraordinary and challenging. Not only was Rebby an elder sister, but she also served as a guide and a protector for her family. She was more than just an older sister. Rebby and her brother Jackie were the ones who were responsible for taking care of their younger siblings. This was because their father was frequently away traveling for his music or his company. It was more than just an inconvenience to take on this responsibility. Having a deep understanding of how important it was to preserve peace and cohesiveness within the family, Rebby accepted the task with complete and utter enthusiasm. At the time of the year, 1968, Rebby had graduated from Theodore Roosevelt High School, which is situated in Gary. The early years of her life were marked by a combination of religious education, family obligations, and engagement with the music industry. These experiences created the groundwork for her later life and provided the framework for her following life. Rebby Jackson's career in music began somewhat unexpectedly in 1974 when she joined her siblings for performances in Las Vegas. How did she develop there? Let's find out. Career Beginnings and Highlights Randy, Janet, and LaToya were the remaining members of the cast, while the Jackson 5 and Rebby were cast in supporting roles besides them. These early performances were intended to emphasize the combined skills of the family. However, Rebby's participation was delayed until June of that year due to an injured ankle. The objective of these early performances remains the same. The Las Vegas performances were a defining milestone for Rebby because they provided her with the chance to exhibit her musical abilities in a more professional setting. On the other hand, she did not yet consider singing to be a vocation. Rather, she saw it more as a hobby. The Jackson 5's departure from Motown in 1976 and subsequent rebranding as the Jacksons under CBS Records was a more significant turning point in her career as a musician. And a television variety program called The Jacksons made its debut in June 1976. As part of the rebranding efforts of CBS, the Jackson family was contracted to participate in the show from the beginning. In addition to 
becoming the first television program to feature an African-American family. The show's run, which initially lasted for four weeks, was subsequently extended due to its success. This event was a pivotal point in the history of television. Every single one of the Jackson brothers was included in the series, with the only exception of Jermaine, who remained with Motown. The television experience that Rebby had was really important to her. Because of this, she started to take music more seriously and even pondered beginning a career as a musician to support herself. It was around this period that several artists, including The Emotions, Sonny Bono, and Betty Wright, began employing Rebby as a backing vocalist. Her cabaret singing became more refined as she continued to dig further into the art form. However, because she was pregnant with her second child, she had to briefly withdraw from performing, which negatively impacted her professional development. Despite all of these disturbances, Rebby was quietly preparing for something that would be more significant in the months ahead. It wasn't until 1982 that Columbia Records eventually signed her as a solo artist, even though she had been eclipsed for a considerable amount of time by her more famous siblings. Centipede, Rebby's first studio album was released in October 1984, two years after she had ensured that her family life was secure and that her children were little. Centipede was a significant milestone in Rebby's career. What happened next in her career? What opportunities and challenges did she face? Join us as we explore the milestones in her career. A milestone in Rebby's career. The publication of the record was not just a personal accomplishment, but it was also a family event, with contributions coming from some different members of the family. The song Come Alive Saturday Night was written by her husband Nathaniel Brown, together with her brothers Randy and Tito. Additionally, Tito worked with his wife, Dee Dee, on the song Hey Boy, Centipede, the album's title tune, established itself as the album's most successful single, selling more than one million copies. Her brother Michael was responsible for writing, arranging, and producing the song, and he also contributed vocals to it. The Weather Girls provided backup musical accompaniment. Not only did it make it to the fourth spot on the Black Singles chart, but the Recording Industry Association of America also awarded it the gold certification. The success of Centipede was especially noteworthy because it was Michael's first attempt at composing and producing music since the release of his renowned Thriller album. Rebby's position as a professional recording artist was cemented as a result of the song's popularity, which demonstrated that she was capable of standing on her own despite the remarkable achievements of her brothers. Although there was a range of opinions on the record, it was certain that Rebby had established herself as a prominent figure in the music industry. Some disputes took place with the release of Centipede over whether or not Rebby should use the Jackson surname in a professional capacity. Rebby chose to accept her argument that it would be bad to disavow her family name, although she was first uncomfortable about acknowledging it. Nevertheless, she made a compromise by putting her initial name in a prominent position on the album cover. While Jackson's name was printed in a lower font, Rebby subsequently indicated that the celebrity of her siblings, notably Michael and Janet, had been more of a benefit than a disadvantage to her career, as it gave her immediate name recognition. This was in response to her desire to reflect on her decision. In October of 1986, Rebby released her second album, titled Reaction, which was a continuation of the popularity of her initial offering. The album was recorded at Tito's Ponderosa Studios in Los Angeles, and it featured duets with Robin Zander, the lead vocalist of Cheap Trick, and the great Isaac Hayes. Additionally, the album contained collaborations with David Conley and David Townsend, both of whom are members of the R&B group Surface. On the R&B singles chart, the song Reaction, which was the title track of the album, became the most popular hit of the album, reaching number 16. You Send the Rain Away, a duet collaboration with Xander, likewise had a moderate level of success, reaching its highest position on the R&B chart at number 50. Reaction was a continuation of Rebby's investigation of her musical identity, which she had begun before. The excellent welcome that Rebby received did not prevent her from remaining somewhat in the shadow of her siblings, yet she proceeded to create a stable and respectable career in the music industry. In July of 1988, Rebby released her third studio album, titled Are You Tough Enough, which was released two years later. This time around, she decided to take a more hands-on approach to the production process to realize her goal of creating an album that was not only varied but also faithful to her ever-developing style. The album had a variety of songs, including ballads and dance pieces, which reflected Rebby's ambition to experiment with a variety of musical styles. On the R&B singles chart, the tracks Plaything and Are You Tough Enough? Both charted, with Plaything making it into the top 10. Are You Tough Enough? However, did not chart, 
it was difficult for Are You Tough Enough to attain the same degree of popularity as her prior albums, according to some critics, even though it had sold 300,000 copies by the middle of June 1988, following the publication of the film Are You Tough Enough. Before taking a break from recording, Rebby provided vocals for the song that serves as the title track for her brother's album, which is titled 2300 Jackson Street. During this period, she continued to play all over the world, therefore preserving her connection to her music while also juggling the demands of her family life. The year 1995 marked Rebby's comeback to the music world with a rendition of Bob Dylan's song Forever Young, which was performed for the film Free Willy 2 The Adventure Home. This marked the beginning of a new era in her career, as she was signed to MJJ Music, the record company that was owned by her brother Michael around this time. The publication of her fourth studio album titled Yours Faithfully occurred in the year 1998, ten years after the release of her last studio album. Initially, she was hesitant to add a remix of her popular song Centipede to the album. Nevertheless, she ultimately decided to include it. The sensation that it was a part of her history. Despite this, she finally concluded that the remix, which featured a rap created by her son Austin, was an appropriate approach for her to reintroduce herself to the world of music. Yours Faithfully also featured contributions from her two children, Stacy and Yashi, who contributed background vocals for the song. The production of the album was supervised by Michael, who also served as a co-executive producer for the project and was responsible for writing and producing the song Fly Away. In addition to including many different producers, such as Keith Thomas and Elliot Kennedy, the album also featured a duet with Spanky Williams, who is a member of Men of Vision, on the song I Don't Wanna Lose You by The Spinners. There was a single release of the title tune, which reached its highest position on the R&B chart at number 78. Some critics felt that the album's content consisted of a mixture of antiquated R&B grooves, even though the album earned some excellent reviews. Additionally, the album received mixed reception. One of the distinguishing features of Rebby's music is her vocal style. Do you feel the same? Let's find out how Rebby conquered fans with her fast music style. Reb's vocal style. Rebi's voice is powerful and unique, even though she may not have the multi-octave range of some of her contemporaries, such as Patti LaBelle or Aretha Franklin, in contrast to her sisters Janet and LaToya, whose vocals are frequently characterized by breathy, delicate tones. Rebi's delivery is more forceful and less mannered than her sisters. However, Rebi's singing, like that of many of her siblings, possesses some of the classic Jackson characteristics. These characteristics include crisp phrasing, a light vibrato, and spontaneous vocal embellishments, all of which have become hallmarks of the sound that the Jackson family is known for. Behind the pressure of her sibling's fame, Rebe also faces many challenges in her personal life. What are those challenges? How do they affect Rebe? Let's explore to get a more accurate view of her. Personal Life and Challenges both Rebby's professional and personal life are inextricably connected to the history of the Jackson family at this point. Although all of Rebby's siblings went their ways in the music industry, her heart was always interested in something else. One that is less traveled, one that is occupied by people who are looking for a home life that is free from the strains of the entertainment business, and one that is filled to the brim with love and family. It was in November of 1968, when Rebby was just 18 years old, that she made a decision that would forever change her life. The long-awaited marriage between her and Nathaniel Brown, her childhood sweetheart, was finally acknowledged by the world. Despite this, the Jackson family experienced a range of feelings in response to the revelation, which paved the way for a disagreement within the family that would put Rebby's resolve to the test. As a result of the future that Rebby envisioned for herself, she sought to marry Brown and relocate to the state of Kentucky. Although she had taken classes in dance, clarinet, and piano when she was younger and had won multiple singing competitions as a duet partner with her brother Jackie, Rebby never had any desire to pursue a career in singing or to perform in front of an audience. In the end, she concluded that the safety of her family was more essential than the excitement of working in the entertainment business. There was a disagreement between her and Joseph, Rebby's father, about this decision when it came to his children's careers in the entertainment industry. Joseph Jackson, the patriarch of the Jackson family, had very high expectations for them. On the other hand, he was optimistic about Rebby's future in the music industry. Nonetheless, she was contemplating getting married, which he believed may be a potential obstacle. 
As a result of his opposition to the marriage, the Jackson household was a source of intense stress for several weeks. On the other hand, Rebby had Catherine, her mother, working as an agent for her business. Catherine encouraged her daughter to pay attention to her feelings since she was aware of the significance of family and believed that it was essential for women to fulfill the roles of becoming moms and wives. There was more to Rebby's decision to marry Brown than just a simple attachment to him. At the same time, she had a strong desire to escape the authoritarian influence of her father, as well as the chaotic environment that she had experienced in her childhood home. This marriage, in Rebby's eyes, was her ticket to freedom and the beginning of the happy and stable family she had spent her whole life dreaming of having. After weeks of heated argument, Joseph finally gave his approval for the wedding to proceed regardless of the circumstances. The fact that he did not accompany Rebby on the day of her wedding, however, was a clear demonstration of his disgust. The absence of her must have brought into sharp relief the considerable gap that her decision had produced. On the other hand, it was a demonstration of Rebe's fortitude in the face of pressure from her family to compromise her beliefs and aspirations. Following a marriage that lasted for more than four decades, Rebe and Nathaniel Brown eventually married and divorced in 2013. Austin, their son, and Stacy and Yoshi, their daughters, were all children that they raised. The musical talents of their mother served as a source of motivation for all three of Rebby's children. All of them are currently working in the entertainment sector. With the help of Yoshi and Stacy, Geneva was established as a band. In the beginning, they were known as X-Girls. Austin, better known by his stage moniker Augie, went solo today. In 2005, Rebby's daughter Stacy became a grandmother for the first time. She experienced the enormous joy that comes with being a grandmother. A baby named London Blue was born. To put things into perspective, Rebe did experience certain challenges throughout his life. In January of 2013, her husband, Nathaniel Brown, who had been fighting a heroic battle against sickness, passed away. Due to the sudden passing of her brother Michael in June 2009, Rebe was forced to deal with yet another tragedy that befell her family. This occurred just a few years earlier. The unexpected passing of Michael Jackson left everyone, including the Jackson family, in a state of bewilderment. He had achieved a level of celebrity that was extraordinary on a world worldwide scale. Additionally, Rebby and her siblings were present during the memorial service for Michael, which took place at the Staples Center in Los Angeles on July 7, 2009. Two of Michael Jackson's most famous songs, We Are the World and Heal the World, were performed by the brothers when they got back together. Following the conclusion of the funeral service, Rebby addressed the crowd that had gathered at the neighboring LA Live Entertainment Complex. She was accompanied by her sisters, Janet and LaToya. Their family's ability to remain united throughout this challenging period was demonstrated by the poignant message that they wrote to express their gratitude for all of the support they received. After Michael's passing, his three children, Prince, Paris, and Blanket, were the focus of a great deal of speculation in the media. According to Rebby's sources, even while there is a potential that Rebby's grandmother Catherine would be awarded official custody of her grandchildren, it is possible that she will wind up being the primary caregiver for her brother's children. Catherine was ultimately given the responsibility of becoming Michael's children's legal guardian beginning in August of 2009. Because Rebby is a Jehovah's Witness, he was able to maintain his strength and find his way through these challenging circumstances. During the process of navigating the complexities of both familial and individual loss, she found comfort in her religious beliefs, which she shared with her siblings, particularly Michael and LaToya. Despite the tragedies and challenges, Rebby's passion for music never completely faded. What artistic activities has Rebby had after these events? Let's go on a journey to discover her passion for music. Reb's passion for music. At the beginning of 2011, she announced that she had started recording songs for her future album. At that time, it had been 14 years since she had released her previous album before she made the announcement. In addition to this, she went on a tour that took her all across the United States, during which she sang not only her most famous songs, but also songs by her brother and other Motown legends. Over the few years that have passed, Rebby has been entrusted with yet another significant responsibility that is related to his family. Catherine Jackson, who is presently the matriarch of the Jackson family, has been receiving care from her since the year 2017 when she began offering it. Let's talk about the following. Even though she has never been the subject of as much public attention as her well-known siblings, Rebby has been through a substantial amount of drama and grief throughout her whole life. What are the controversies surrounding her? What pains did she go through? Let's continue reading. The answer will be right after this. 
The Controversies and Heartaches in Rebby's Life In 2011, Rebby shared her thoughts and feelings on her life following the passing of her brother, Michael Jackson. In 2009, Michael Jackson passed away, which shook the whole globe and left his family in a state of disbelief. The loss was very distressing for Rebby for several reasons. Because she had assisted in Michael's upbringing throughout their youth, she had always maintained a strong relationship with him. Rebby had an open and honest conversation about the tremendous impact that Michael's death had on her. On the American television show, The View, she described the experience as a living night Nightmare. According to Raby, even after two years had passed after Michael's demise, she stated that she did not go a single day without thinking about him, and she frequently found herself crying in the middle of the day due to the agony, which was so severe that she could not contain her emotions. Despite the profound amount of sadness that she was experiencing, Raby said that the family was coming together, united in their determination to see justice implemented. Dr. Conrad Murray, Michael's physician, was accused of involuntary manslaughter for delivering the lethal amount of propofol that led to Michael's sudden cardiac arrest. The circumstances surrounding Michael's death were surrounded by controversy, and Dr. Murray was accused of being responsible for Michael's death. Rebbe, along with a significant number of her relatives, had trust in the court system and was confident that the truth would finally be revealed. In answer to the question regarding Dr. Murray, Rebbe gave a statement that was calm but unwavering. Throughout the years, she admitted that the family had been aware of Michael's problems with substance abuse, which had resulted in several interventions being carried out. Nevertheless, Rebbe highlighted that despite these difficulties, the specific facts behind Mikhail's murder ought to be completely disclosed said and revealed with complete transparency. An enduring feeling of unfairness persisted, and the family had high hopes that it would be resolved via the utilization of the judicial system. Having to deal with the death of her brother was a difficult experience for Rebbe, and the difficulties she had in her personal life made it even more difficult. At around the same time, Rebbe was coming to terms with the challenges that her daughter Yashi Brown was experiencing. Yashi, one of Rebbe's three children with her late husband Nathaniel Brown, was diagnosed with bipolar illness. Rebbe's spouse had passed away recently. A desperate quest for solutions and a strategy to assist her daughter in managing the disease was the defining characteristic of the experience that Rebbe described as being one that she would never forget. During an interview, Rebbe discussed the obstacles that come with living with bipolar illness. He mentioned that a significant number of individuals are affected by this condition without even being aware that they have it. It was with an attitude of acceptance and comprehension that she dealt with Yashi's difficulties. Yashi, on the other hand, was getting ready to tell her story to the entire world. Her struggle with bipolar disease was chronicled in a collection of poems that she had written and published under the title Black Daisy in a white limousine, 77 poems. Yashi dreamed that via her writing, she would be able to assist other people who were going through similar difficulties and encourage them to be honest about their issues rather than attempt to conceal them or act like they had everything under control. Even as they navigated the complications of living with a mental health problem in a high-profile family, Yashi's path was a reflection of the fortitude and perseverance that Rebbe had instilled in her up to that point. Years later, a different kind of rumor emerged, one that brought to light a dark chapter in their history. What are these rumors that have such a terrible impact? Without further ado, I will answer them right away. Other Rumors Rebi Jackson's sister, Latoya Jackson, came forth with disturbing charges against their father, Joseph Jackson, in the biography that she wrote in 1991. In her statement, Latoya said that Joseph had sexually molested both her and Rebi while they were younger adolescents. The media and the general public were left in a state of utter disbelief as a result of these charges, which Latoya also discussed on several times. Talk programs. It was terrifying to hear Latoya's statements. Despite Catherine's complaints, she recalled how Joseph would get out of bed with their mother, Catherine, and get into bed with his daughters. Catherine was the mother of the children. Latoya's version of these events provided a terrible image of a father who imposed control over his family by abusing them physically, mentally, and sexually. She also claimed that he abused his children sexually. Based on the charges made by Latoya, it was alleged that the abuse started after Rebbe left home when he was 16 years old, leaving Latoya to go through the ordeal by herself. Latoya Jackson's memoir and the many interviews that followed were explosive, not only because the revelations contained personal information, but also due to the 
ramifications that these discoveries have for how the general public perceives the Jackson family. LaToya asserted that her mother, Catherine, was aware of the abuse but decided to keep silent about it. LaToya stated that this choice added to her emotions of uncertainty and betrayal because Catherine chose to remain silent. Although Joseph Jackson fiercely disputed the charges, the harm to his image was substantial. Despite this, the allegations were made. For Rebbe, these allegations were deeply personal and painful. She had always been protective of her privacy and had never publicly spoken about any abuse she may have suffered. The claims made by LaToya brought unwanted attention to Rebbe, thrusting her into the spotlight in a way that was both uncomfortable and distressing. The rumors and revelations about the Jackson family have not stopped. In 1993, LaToya stated that their mother, Catherine, expressed concerns about Michael, suspecting that their brother might be involved in inappropriate behavior with children many years before the first public allegations emerged. What do you think about this rumor? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.